Good day, my dear friends. I am Dr. Usam Ibrahim from Easy and Different Radiology. Welcome back in the Radiological Anatomy. Today, our appointment is episode 15. I will talk about today about the posterior fossa anatomy. So, let's get started. The posterior cranial fossa is comprised of three bones the occipital bone posteriorly and the temporal bones on both sides. Anteriorly and medially, it is bounded by the dorsum cellae of the sphenoid bone, as we will see in next slides in diagrams. This diagram showing the occipital bone posteriorly and temporal bone laterally, which are forming the posterior fossa, and in the most anterior and superior structure, there are the dorsum cellae, and this dorsum cellae is part from the sphenoid bone which is representing most superior part of the sphenoid bone and forming the boundaries anteriorly and medially of the posterior fossa. Posterior fossa connecting with the spinal canal with this foramen magnum and there are a lot of foramina in the skull base which appearing here like this internal acoustic meatus and jugular foramen, the hypoglossal canal and other foramina appearing in this region. Anyway, we have the posterior fossa here, which composed from the occipital bone and temporal bone laterally and anteriorly, the, do the dorsum cellae making the anterior and the medial boundary for, for it. And now, what is the contents of this posterior fossa? In this axial T2-weighted image, as the CSF appeared bright and subcutaneous fat appeared bright, so this is T2 in axial sequence in MRI. The cerebellum appearing here in two in both sides as a two cerebellar hemispheres. So this one is the left cerebellar hemisphere, and this arrow refers to the connection of both cerebellar hemispheres by this vermis, which is called the cerebellum vermis. And also this arrow referring to the anterior structure of the cerebellum in the posterior fossa, which is called the brainstem. And this part from the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, as it is the most lower part from the brainstem. So the posterior fossa contents is the cerebellum connecting by the cerebellar vermis, and the brainstem as midbrain bones and medulla oblongata according to the level of the axial image, as this axial T2 image at the level of the medulla oblongata. And now, what about the fluids in the posterior fossa? This is CSF, which appearing bright in the T2. CSF between the brainstem and the cerebellar vermis is called the force ventricle. So this one is the force ventricle. And the force ventricle is connecting to the subarachnoid spaces through three apertures. This uh, one from the three apertures, this arrow referring to the foramen of Lashka, which is the left side, and there are another foramen of Lashka in the right side. And this line is referred to the phallic cerebelli, and there are fluid also again here, which is called the cisterna magna, posterior to the cerebellar vermis. So this is the anatomy and the contents of the posterior fossa, which mainly composed from the cerebellum. And this image is CT image, as the bone appeared bright, and the fluid appeared dark, so this is CT. However, it is in the sagittal reformat image, which appearing like lateral view in MRI or X-ray. In this contents of the posterior fossa, which appearing here, can be also be seen in the CT image. As we see here, there are a lot of numbers, and these numbers are referring to structures. If you want to think about the numbers, which appearing uh, subsequently, the first one is referring to the Spelenum of corpus callosum, as the corpus callosum appearing here, and posterior part from corpus callosum is called the spelenum. And the number two here referring to the cerebellum hemisphere. Number three referring to this tent of fluids, which between the brainstem anteriorly and cerebellum posterior, and this one referred to the fourth ventricle. And number four here referring to this canal, which connecting the fluids between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle, and this canal is called aqueduct of Salvius. And number four, 
This is referring to soft tissue structures within this fossa or cella tersica. So this is referring to pituitary gland within the cella tersica. And six here referring to part from the cerebral hemispheres, which is the most posterior part, as this is the anterior and this is the posterior, which is called occipital loop of the cerebral hemisphere, separated from the posterior fossa by this tentorium. And seven is referring to the most anterior structure of the cerebral hemisphere, which is called frontal loop. And the eight referring again to the canal connecting the fourth ventricle to the subarachnoid spaces in the cisterna magna here. And this canal is called the foramen of Megendi. And this ring, red ring, is referring to the posterior fossa with structures in the posterior fossa, which boundaries by the occipital loop posteriorly and temporal loop in both sides, which are not appearing here, and the dorsum cell anteriorly. The form of Magendi, also called the median aperture, as it is one only, is one of the foramina in the ventricular system and links the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna, as we saw it in the previous slides. This again, another image, however, here the subcutaneous fats appeared suppressed and the bone appeared dark, so this sequence is MRI sequence. And because the CSF appearing dark and white matter appearing dark also, so it is flare image. So this is sagittal flare MRI image which is showing also the posterior fossa structure. The ring, the red ring, is referring to the posterior fossa structure. Foramen of magnum is referring to the most inferior part from the posterior fossa, which connecting it to the spinal canal, cord and the canal. And the dorsum cellae of the sphenoid bone, which appearing anterior here, this referring to the anterior boundaries of the posterior fossa. So this is the inferior boundary and this is the anterior boundary of the posterior fossa. And this arrow referring to the structure here between the brainstem and cerebellum which is called fourth ventricle. However, this fluid which appearing here between the foramen magnum and cerebellum is called the cisterna magna. So there are fluid here, CSF, in the fourth ventricle and the fluid there in the cisterna magna connecting together with this canal which is called the foramen of Magendi. So foramen of Magendi connecting CSF in the fourth ventricle with subarachnoid spaces in the cisterna magna. Where is the splenum of corpus callosum? The most posterior part of the corpus callosum here is called the splenum. And this one is the brainstem which is composed superiorly from the midbrain, this part, and the most bulging anterior part is called bones, and the inferior part is called the medulla oblongata. In the bones, the fluids anterior to the bones between it and dorsum cell is called the prepontine cistern. And the medulla oblongata, as I told you, this is the most inferior part from the brainstem. And now the cerebellum, this one is the cerebellum. There are two cerebellar hemispheres connecting together with the cerebellar vermis. And now foramen of Lashka. There are two foramen of Lashka, one on the right and one on the left side, connecting the CSF in the fourth ventricles to the subarachnoid CSF. They are beard aperture located in the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle within the posterior cranial fossa. This two is the right foramen flashka and this three, number three, is referring to the left foramen flashka. Foramen flashka, this is part from the apertures, lateral apertures, connecting the fourth ventricle CSF with the subarachnoid spaces. Again, this is sagittal flare image as the CSF appeared suppressed and the subcutaneous fat also is suppressed so this is 
flare image in sagittal view the arrow here is referring to the dark signal in the third ventricle and the other arrow is referring to the dark signal fluid which is a in flare also in the fourth ventricle so this is the third ventricle and this one is the fourth ventricle however the most inferior arrow here referring to the fluid in the cisterna magna so this ring orange ring is referring to the pituitary gland within the cella tercica so this one is a pituitary gland posterior to the pituitary gland is the dorsum cell which referring to the most anterior boundary for the posterior fossa however this over ring yellow one is referring to the canal which is connecting the CSF in the third ventricles with the CSF in the fourth ventricle and this canal is called aqueduct of Salvius however the other canal connecting the CSF in the fourth ventricle with the CSF in the cisterna magna is called the foramen of Megindi again this is an axial image in the MRI as the bone appeared dark signal however the subcutaneous fat is bright signal and CSF is, is appeared dark signal so this is a T1 axial view in MRI number one here referring to the midbrain and number two is referring to the cerebellum hemisphere left side left cerebellum hemisphere however number three because MRI can see part from the occipital loop posteriorly in the upper cuts at the level of the midbrain so this one is the occipital loop and four is referring to the fourth ventricle five referring to the anterior part from the temporal loop most inferior segment and anterior of the temporal loop so this is the left temporal loop however six dark dark bone appearing dark in the MRI so this is part from the temporal bone which is called left petrous bone which forming or boundaries the lateral aspect of the posterior fuss occipital loop occipital bone is forming the posterior aspect of the posterior fuss number seven here referring to this dot of dark signal like this dot in the other side is called the internal carotid artery within the cavernous sinus, sinus in the right side so this is the right internal carotid artery and it referring to the dorsum cell which boundaries the anterior and the medial aspect of the posterior fossa again sagittal view in this sagittal view I will see some anatomy I will show you some anatomy in this magnified image from my daily work cases this one is called the clivus and this bone is the dorsum cellae which boundaries the anterior aspect of the posterior fossa and this arrow referring to the most superior part from the dorsum cellae which is called the posterior colonoid process however this arrow which is referring to this dark signal anterior to the pituitary gland which is called the sphenoid sinus and this arrow referring to the anterior part from the pituitary gland which appearing iso intense signal like this however the posterior part from the pituitary gland appearing a bright signal like this so this is a posterior pituitary gland posterior pituitary gland appearing a high signal in the T1 weighted image so this is sagittal T1 weighted image this arrow referring to part from the brain stem the most superior part which is called the midbrain anterior to the midbrain there are pulp like this this pulp is called the mammillary body and the infundibulum here which connecting the pituitary gland with the upper structures and this is called the infundibulum so there are infundibulum anterior and the mammillary body posterior 
the structures between the infundibulum and the mammillary body is called the tuber cinerum. And the structures anterior to the infundibulum is called the optic chiasm. So this is the structures in this region. This one, which appearing bright signal in the T1 also, is called the corpus callosum, which connect, consists from the genu anteriorly, body, isthmus, and the spleenum posterior. However, this arrow referring to this tent of fluid, which is called the fourth ventricle between the brainstem anteriorly and the cerebellum posteriorly. And this arrow referring to the canal which is connecting the CSF between the fourth ventricles and cisterna magna which is called foramen of magenti or medial aperture of the fourth ventricle. And this one is the cisterna magna. The cerebellar tonsils appearing here as ovoid structures in the most inferior surface of the cerebellum which appearing here. So this arrow referring to the cerebellum tonsils. The cerebellum tonsils referring to ovoid structure, this one, on the inframedial surface of each cerebellar hemisphere. So this one is the tonsils in this image which is bearing the most inferior surface of the cerebellum. This diagram showing the tonsils which bulging inferiorly like this. They are attached to the underlying cerebellum by the tonsillar peduncle. And this is the other tonsils attached to the cerebellum by peduncle. And this is the cerebellum hemisphere left side. And this is cerebellum hemisphere right side connecting it together in midline with the cerebellar vermis. However, the tonsils is the most inferior protruding structure from the cerebellum. I hope this lesson has helped to make a few things clearer for you and I invite you also in my new Facebook group by the same name is in different radiology and also you can watch more than 70 presentations on my channels in easy and different radiology by searching in Google search I wait you every Wednesday for MRI learning lesson, every Sunday for rapid review anatomy like this Sunday, and every Friday for new mnemonic words. Thank you very much for your watching, listening, and have a nice day.